Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. There's a lot of excitement around using agents to perform tasks that language models are not really great at. Things like math or just generating API calls to call your own applications. Well, RC recently released a model called RC Agent, which was specifically built for agent-based applications. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about RC Agent and what it is, and then we're going to run a demo where I use the model to generate API calls for Yahoo Finance to retrieve company information, stock quotes, etc. Okay, let's get started. RC Agent has been specifically built for function calling and using external tools. It's based on the Quent 2 7 billion a model, which is already a very good model, and it was further trained uh, and specialized for agent apps. So this is the blog post. Of course, I will put all the links in the video description. You can learn a little bit more about the model. It can be used for API integration, database operations, code generation, etc., etc. Lots of different things, right? And you can also see some benchmarks and you can see, um, you know, it's ranking pretty high, outperforming uh, GPT-3.5, outperforming uh, a recent version of GPT-4.0 and, and many more models. So it is a really, really good model. I really encourage you to try it. As you would expect, it is available on the Hugging Face Hub. So you can go and grab it there, uh, either the full precision model or the quantized version, if you'd prefer to run uh, smaller versions, maybe locally. So let's look at the demo now. In this demo, I'm going to run everything locally. I will run RC Agent Full Precision 7B uh, with OLAMA. Uh, and uh, integrating through Langchain, I will run inference on this local model, running some prompts, asking it to perform uh, Python function calls to the Yahoo Finance API to retrieve stock prices, etc. We just need a few dependencies for this. Of course, we need Langchain uh, with the Olama integration, and we need the Yahoo Finance package. Okay, so let's just go and import all of those. So next, we need to make sure we have the model locally. So let's just go and run this. Already done it. Should be quick. Okay, and make sure it's there. Yes, okay, we see it. Okay, 5.4 gigs, good. So we should be able to run this locally now. Okay, so let's run this cell, good. And now let's look at the functions we'd like the model to perform. So we have a prompt, okay. You have four primary functions, checking the last price of a specified stock, finding the name of a company's CEO, finding what a company does, and answering specific questions about a company. Okay, Use the appropriate function based on the user query. Simple enough. So the, far, the four functions we have are called get stock price, get CEO name, get company summary, and answer general question, okay? So get stock price takes the name of a company, right? My question would be something like, uh, you know, what's the last closing price of McDonald's, okay? I want the model to automatically find the stock symbol, the, the ticker code for uh, this company. I'm not gonna give it to the model. It needs to figure it out. And then it's gonna output, um, it, and then it's gonna call the, the relevant Yahoo Finance API and return something like the last closing price, the last closing price for McDonald's was 250. Okay, so that's what the function looks like. Okay, and so again, I want the model to pass the stock symbol. Retrie Yahoo Finance will give me uh, information on the stock. Um, Yahoo Finance for this stock symbol will give me the stock history and then I'll just print everything. Okay, so that's function number one. Function number two, get CEO name. So same story, I'll pass a company name. Okay, uh, let's say McDonald's. I want the model to figure out the ticker code. 
call the appropriate uh, Yahoo Finance API and then retrieve the name of the CEO and print something like this. Okay, the, the, code, the function is this. Okay, pretty similar to the previous one, except we're just extracting the CEO name and the full job title from that information. Okay, third function is get company summary. Same story, I'll pass a company name, I want the model to output the ticker code. And it will just again call the API, extract the, the long summary describing the activities of the company and print that out. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Company summary, extract the information, print it out. And the final function is answer general questions where you know it's kind of the, the catch-all uh, function so if the model does not detect uh, any of those three intents in my prompt then it will call this okay and we'll just hopefully do its best with its built-in knowledge to answer the question right instructions are simple um, if the a user asks a question for the stock price use get stock price ceo name get ceo name etc etc okay all right, simple enough. So that's my prompt. Um, I didn't provide a lot of examples, um, some examples here and there, um, but yeah, not a ton of uh, you know examples. I generally don't like those, so and I prefer to run examples where we don't need a ton of uh, in-context learning. Right, keeps the the prompt shorter and the calls faster. So now let's look at how we're gonna run those prompts through the model. We're going to invoke the model with this function called LLM pack. So this function will, will take our input. Okay, so the, the system prompt we, we just looked at plus the actual user query. Okay, we're going to pass it to the model. And we're going to do this with the function call function, which we see here, right? So we invoke the model with the payload. Okay. And we're going to retrieve the name of the function that we need to call, right? So the model will say, basically, based on this prompt, this is the function call to perform, okay? And we'll actually see this when we run the demo. And then I am extracting the name of that function, which is code, and I'm running it, right? So that's the ID. Um, the model will not run the function. The model will return the function call to perform, which this code extracts from the output and runs locally. Okay, that's how it happens. And you can say, whoa, 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 that's a little bit complicated here. And yeah, you're not wrong. It's a little bit of a Python trickery. So why don't we use one of our good models to maybe explain what this function does. Okay, and I'm gonna use another model for this and we saw it in another video and it's Llama Spark, right? Our iteration on Llama 3, 1, 8 billion. Oh, let's run this. And should we say, explain what this code does? Wonderful. Now we get a clear explanation on what this thing does. Line by line, right? Amazing alternative to GitHub Copilot, if you ask me. So if you don't want to pay for Copilot, why not do this instead? And while we're at it, why don't we do this, right? Make this notebook a little better. There we go. Okay, so let's just paste this. And why don't we do the same for this one? Okay. That's nice. I love this. We have some documentation. Okay. Cool. So that's the idea, right? Invoke the LLM with the prompt. 
let the LLM figure out which function to use, what the parameters are, extract that, run it. Okay. So now let's run some examples and uh, we'll print out the response. And along the way, we will also see the API call. All right. So what's the stock price for Caterpillar was actually figured out through this API call, get stock price, Caterpillar cat, right? So we see the model figured out cat was the proper ticker code for Caterpillar, call the API, got the job done, right? Um, and let's try this one now. Who runs Caterpillar? Which is a, a fuzzier question. You know, I didn't say who's the CEO or who's the boss or, you know, who's leading. Who runs Caterpillar was actually matched to, uh, to the CEO name, right? Uh, running a company generally means being the CEO, okay? And we extract um, the information there. So now let's move on to what does Caterpillar build? And well, this is a, a general question about the company. All right, now let's try a last one, which is who are the main competitors of Caterpillar? So, well, you could say it's still a very general question, but we're not asking about the company itself. We're asking about its competitors. So let's see if the model figures that out. Hmm. So we can see it's using the answer general question function, which is the one we asked for. Uh, for those um, other questions. And so now I'm using the built-in knowledge of the model, um, the uh, the RC agent model. And well, it's listing a bunch of companies, which you know, look, seem to make sense. I'm not a an expert in heavy machinery, but this looks like a, a decent answer at least. Okay. And of course, you could use your RAG and you could use uh, additional orchestration to get all of this done, right? Um, well, let's uh, let's try another company real quick. Uh, what's the stock price for? Oh, come on, yeah, we have to do Tesla. Okay, who runs Tesla? I think we all should know. Oh, his full job title is co-founder Techno King. Okay, typical. Right, Elon Musk humility at work. Okay, good summary. Oh, let's see about this one. Interesting. Do they have any competition? Of course they do. Okay, well, <laughs> a bunch of automakers, right? Which which makes sense. Which makes sense. All right. Well, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video. Um, the uh, the RC agent model. And, uh, and uh, a simple demo on using it to generate Python API calls. But keep in mind, you can do much more. You can try SQL. You can do all kinds of things. So uh, keep exploring. I'm sure I'll come back to, uh, to agent models in future videos. Thank you for watching. And you know what to do. Keep rocking.